Welcome to the Northern Illinois University webinar on Understanding the Performance Evaluation Review Act, or PARA, and the Danielson Framework. My name is Melanie Bickley, and I'm the Assistant Director in the Office of Secondary School Partnerships and Clinical Experiences. Today I'll be going through my entire presentation and answering any questions that you might have at the end. The topics we will be covering this evening include a basic understanding of the Performance Evaluation Review Act, or PARA, and Senate Bill 7, and then we will also focus on a basic understanding of the Charlotte Danielson model of evaluation. The PARA, or Performance Evaluation Review Act, was passed in January 2010, and it was designed to change the evaluation system for teachers and principals in the state of Illinois. Um, previous systems of evaluation were very inconsistent. They varied by district, often were very subjective, and they did not give support to improve practice and student performance. PARA basically has three components. The first includes student growth as a significant factor in the evaluations of teachers and school administrators. For the majority of Illinois school districts, this must be implemented by the 2016-2017 school year. Uh, in September 2012, at least 300 schools in the Chicago Public School District were required to include this data and indicators of student growth in their evaluations. Any school receiving federal school improvement grants also was required to include this in their evaluations in September of 2012. All remaining Chicago Public Schools needed to include this data by September 2013. And the lowest performing 20% of school districts in the state of Illinois must include it in their evaluations by September of 2015. Then the remaining school districts in Illinois will be required to include student growth as a part of their evaluation process by the beginning of the school year in 2016. Component 2 of PARA has already been implemented by school districts. Uh, that required that by September in 2012, all building administrators and teachers must be evaluated using these four mandated descriptors, excellent, proficient, needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. No matter what tool schools are using to evaluate or when they need to include that student growth factor, they are required to use these four descriptors, and these four descriptors are mandated by the state of Illinois. The final component of PARA includes uh, training, and this has already been implemented by school districts throughout the state. Anyone who evaluates teachers or building administrators must go uh, through a pre-qualification training in order to calibrate their scoring. So that was had to be implemented by September 2012. It consists of online modules. Um, to evaluate teachers, administrators, or department chairs must undergo 32 hours of online self-paced training and to evaluate principals uh, requires 15 hours of online self-paced training. And these trainings must be passed in order to evaluate teachers and or administrators. PARA reflects a change in prior practice in that it incorporates measures of student growth. This is the most significant change. The clear descriptions of professional excellence based on effective practice are an important component and the new rating categories. Uh, the descriptions before were often vague and based on subjective factors, so having PARA in place to itemize what exactly is involved in the evaluation system is very helpful for districts and the state combined. Senate Bill 7 was signed into law in June of 2011. It is a part of PARA and addresses the acquisition of tenure, reductions in force or RIFs, layoffs and recall rights, and the system for dismissal of tenured teachers. Senate Bill 7 has changed teacher evaluation in a couple of ways. Before Senate Bill 7, tenure seniority was the first thing that districts looked at in determining which teachers would be laid off or rift. Now, after Senate Bill 7, districts are looking at qualifications and certifications first, then performance evaluations, and finally seniority. Before Senate Bill 7, teachers were only allowed tenure after a specific number of years. After Senate Bill 7, Tenure can be performance-based, and a teacher can be tenured more quickly with excellent evaluations. In addition, before Senate Bill 7, it was often difficult to remove underperforming teachers from the classroom. After Senate Bill 7, uh, two unsatisfactory ratings in seven years can lead to the suspension or revocation of an educator's certificate. If you have more questions regarding PARA or Senate Bill 7, 
These are a couple of places you can go to find out more information. The Illinois State Board of Education has a very nice uh, directory of information that you can access from this website. Or you can also go to the Chicago Public School District for a frequently asked question page about para. Next we'll be talking about the Danielson model or framework for teacher evaluation. Charlotte Danielson is the author of a framework for teaching and this is a model that closely matches the state of expectations for new evaluation model as put forth by PARA and Senate Bill 7. Uh, this specific model incorporates student data and the mandated descriptors. Although Charlotte Danielson's are a little different, they're able to modify those to match those as mandated by the state of Illinois. The Charlotte Danielson model is comprehensive. It is attempting to describe all teaching, both what occurs in the classroom and what happens during planning and preparation, and also what happens beyond the classroom walls, as that's a lot of what makes up good teaching. Uh, the Danielson model is grounded in research. Some of it's data-driven, some of it's theoretical, but all of them refer back to research on what is considered good teaching. The Danielson model is public. It's transparent communication. Teachers know what good teaching looks like and what is expected. Uh, people can go and look at the Danielson model and make decisions based on what that model looks like. So it is very easy for teachers to know what is expected of them. The Danielson model is also generic. It tries to account for all settings and situations, from rural to urban, elementary to secondary, everything in between. The Danielson model takes into account that every setting is going to be different and it should be applicable to any setting that a teacher might find themselves in. The Danielson model is also coherent in structure. It makes sense to the trained and untrained. It's easy to follow. It's modeled from rubrics, which most teachers are familiar in working with, so it's able to translate easily to anybody who might be using it as an evaluation tool. And finally, the Danielson model is independent of any teaching methodology. Uh, the teaching approach rests on the teacher. The teacher gets to decide what type of tools the teacher wants to use in order to reach whatever student or hit whatever standard. It does not subscribe to one specific belief over another. So a lot of freedom is still given to the teacher in regards to making decisions about the instruction of their classroom. Each of the four domains is broken down further into components, and each component is then broken down into elements. And the point of this is to break down each skill that is being addressed in each domain. For example, when we talk about planning and preparation, that's a huge topic. And so the Danielson framework has broken those huge topics down into smaller, more manageable pieces for the teacher to understand and to know what they're being evaluated on. So what we're going to do right now is go through each of the four domains and look at the specific components. We will only show one example of a component broken down into elements just because it's very unwieldy in a presentation such as this. but please know that that information is available to you online. Domain 1, or planning and preparation, describes how a teacher organizes the content, how the teacher designs instruction for the classroom, and it covers all aspects of planning for the classroom. So you can see that the component uh, the components that make up planning and preparation are demonstrating knowledge of content and pedagogy, demonstrating knowledge of students, setting instructional outcomes, demonstrating knowledge of resources, designing coherent instruction, and designing student assessments. And these are all the things that make up planning and preparation in the Danielson model. Teachers who excel at dom domain one, they're going to design instruction that reflects an understanding of the disciplines that they teach. They also understand their students' backgrounds, interests, and skills. Domain two deals with the classroom environment. The components that make up the classroom environment include creating an environment of respect and rapport, establishing a culture for learning, managing classroom procedures, managing student behavior, and organizing physical space. These are all about developing the atmosphere of learning in the classroom. And teachers who excel in this domain create an excitement about the importance of learning and the significance of the content. These are the classrooms that kids enjoy going to every day. Domain 3 deals with instruction and the actual engagement of students in the content material. It enhances the student learning and the implementation of the plans from Domain 1. 
This involves communicating with students using questioning and discussion techniques, engaging students in learning, using assessment in instruction, and demonstrating flexibility and responsiveness. Teachers who excel in Domain 3 have well-developed instructional skills. They're able to transition seamlessly from one subject to another, one topic to another. They're able to make connections and help their students make connections between subject materials, ask those higher level questions, and they're attentive to the needs of all students within the classroom. Domain 4 involves the professional responsibilities of the classroom teacher. This is the domain that involves the true, what it means to be a true professional educator and the, encompasses the roles that are rarely seen in the classroom by the students. Instead, it's the teacher and their role in the larger school community. It includes reflecting on teaching, maintaining accurate records, communicating with families, participating in a professional community, and growing and developing. Teachers who excel in Domain 4 are highly regarded by their colleagues and parents alike. They're active in professional organizations, they're joining school committees and district committees, and are otherwise involved within the school community. They go beyond the technical requirements of the job and contribute to the well-being of the institutions that they belong to. There are some common themes that can be found throughout all four of the Danielson Framework domains. First, there's a commitment to equity for all students in all settings. Teachers are expected to be culturally competent and sensitive to the cultures and backgrounds of the students in their classrooms and in their buildings. All domains promote high levels of student achievement. In addition, teachers are expected to know how to relate all of the domains to the developmental level of their own students. Teachers must understand that learning is done by individuals, not groups, so teachers have an obligation to apply all domains to each student based on his or her own needs, including those students with special needs. Technology, when appropriate, teachers should try to implement whatever technology is available in the district or in the building whenever it is educationally appropriate. It's not appropriate just to use tech to use tech, However, it is often appropriate to help your students learn how to use the technology they will be using in their future endeavors. And finally, student assumption of responsibility. The teacher is developing a classroom and community of learners. The student does have responsibility for their own learning. Danielson's framework is broken down into four different domains, and these domains refer to a distinct aspect of teaching in an attempt to quantify excellent instructional practices. So the first domain deals with planning and preparation. The second domain deals with the classroom environment. The third domain deals with instruction. And the fourth domain deals with professional responsibilities. Okay, so here's an example of how the domains are broken into components and then further into elements. This is a specific example from Domain 2, the classroom environment. The first component that we looked at was creating an environment of respect and rapport. That is further broken down into two elements, the teacher interaction with students and student interactions with other students. Some of the components have up to six or seven elements. Um, and some have as few as two. So it breaks down each of the domains into smaller chunks so that the teacher is able to more effectively address what it is that makes up that domain. And finally, for each of the elements, Danielson then provides a level of performance scale. So you can see here we have domain two, the classroom environment, Component 2A, creating an environment of respect and rapport, and then the element is teacher interaction with students. And Danielson has gone through and basically created a rubric for each element that talks about the range from unsatisfactory to excellent so that a teacher could easily use this tool to monitor their own instruction and their own classroom environment. So for each element that Danielson's framework includes, there's a specific rubric 
that the evaluator will use to review the teacher's performance. The nice thing about it is because it is transparent, the teacher is able to view this rubric ahead of time and know what they will be evaluated on. Um, keep in mind that evaluators in Illinois have been trained under PARA to use the Danielson model of evaluation. Although districts don't have to use the Danielson model, most of them are going to this because it does really closely mimic the requirements of PARA. And the nice thing about the Danielson framework is that it is going to provide a more detailed picture of teacher performance and a more consistent evaluation process. On that note, please remember that Danielson is only a framework. It is a really nice tool to build from, and that's what most districts are doing. They are taking the framework and readjusting the language and the tools contained to make it more applicable and appropriate for their district or their specific setting. So Danielson is kind of a springboard by which most districts in Illinois are creating their own tool that will fit the standards put forth by PARA. Um, it may be similar to Danielson, it may not, but it must meet those state criteria set forth by PARA. And the teacher and administrator must work together to find evidence of each element. So in the evaluation process, the teacher and the administrator will need to work together to prove the rating scale and how the teacher is progressing. If you're looking for additional resources on the Danielson framework, I would strongly encourage looking uh, for this book, Enhancing Professional Practice, a framework for teaching by Charlotte Danielson. Uh, it is currently in its second edition, and it will give you each of the frameworks and rubrics for each specific element, along with a more detailed description of the Danielson framework itself. Another source of further information is the Danielson Group website, and this is the website address for that. And this will give you, again, more resources that you can use in finding out more information about the Danielson framework and how it would apply to teaching.